What I learned is that an event doesn't define you, but how you walk out of it does. Today's guest is going to share how you can come out of your wilderness season. If you've ever felt naked spiritually, we have got some great tips for you today as our guest Susan B. Mead is going to be sharing her story and her insights for you today. So welcome, Susan. Welcome to the show. So excited to have you here today. Mamika, I am so honored to be here. Thank you for including me. Well, it's lovely to have you on because I saw your name pop up a couple of times, you know, in the in the in the community of women's ministry, and I was like, hmm, this sounds very interesting. So I started digging and realizing you've got an awesome testimony, and you provide some great resources that you're going to share with us today. And the particular topic that I am so interested in, and um, I had personally been through this, is the wilderness season. Now, if all of you are listening and you're thinking, I'm stuck in a situation where I know God's giving me promises, I have these, these dreams and visions, but I don't know how to get out of that place that we often call hope deferred, you know, that place where you sort of start losing hope. There's certain things that you can do, and Susan is going to give you some great insights today. So make sure to take some notes. So before we get into the content, tell our audience a little bit about you, your backstory and where you're from and how you got to doing what you're doing today. Oh, that's a fun story. I spent my career with Johnson & Johnson and had an office on both coasts. So, man, I was gone all the time. And I lost my youngest son in 2008. I always have to stop and think. And my world turned upside down, Monique, as you can well imagine. It's not something you plan for or you're prepared for. It. A 20 forever 20, you don't expect to ever have to say that as a mother. But in the healing journey, going through that, I was doing a workbook, Henry Blackaby's Experiencing God. And if you haven't done that one, whew, put it on your to-do list. Over 8 million people have done that one, put a question one night, took longer than the two lines provided to answer, and ended up being my first book, Dance with Jesus, From Grief to Grace. And the story of that, I didn't even know I was writing a book, but God knew that I needed to do that. You know, so it's just so interesting from in my 20s and 30s and 40s, would I have told you I was an author? No. 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 But you know what? I also knew that the death of my son couldn't define me. And what I learned is that an event doesn't define you, but how you walk out of it does. So if you're in that wilderness season now, God is the lifter of your head. Let him pick that head up. Let him pick your head up. Put new scripture in your mind and renew it daily. And then you can step out because you're equipped. But all on our own strengths, we're powerless. Don't you agree, yeah. Mika? Oh, yeah. I mean, and this is the thing. I think a lot of us women are have this shame factor where mm. we don't want to share that we're actually going through something tough. I mean, I personally went through this situation um, where also I, I lost my mother-in-law and I had an mm. I incident with um, one of my children who was, you know, severely depressed. And as a, as, as a working mom, I'd like, ha my life fell apart. It's like, I have to stop and pay attention, right? Mm. And sometimes we question, and I think this happens a lot, especially in, in – in, in the Christian world is that we kind of get, we almost feel guilty for being angry. Like, why is this happening? Mm. And no, we don't want people to know that we're actually feeling these things. So we mm. hide things, but God knows and sees everything. He sees our heart. He sees what we're going through, but let's talk a little bit about why it's important that, and that even though it's hard to say you go through these hard things, you know, whether it's divorce or, or, or loss of a, of a loved one, um, how God actually uses that. Cause I would say that, you know, there's always purpose in our pain. Wouldn't you think so whenever we go through that? Absolutely. And you know, if we take that back to scripture, it says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony. And what I've learned is my story is not necessarily just for me, but when I share my story of what I've been able to do with God's help, there's healing for someone else in the story. So how dare I withhold someone else's healing? So someone That's, else is praying for, for yeah. a blessing and someone else is praying for an answer and you are the yeah. answer, right? I think that's yes. a very hard one for us to get around, especially when you're going through this process and a lot of we can, why God, why, and why me? You know, why does it have to happen to me? And sometimes it's not about us. It's what we can mm. give to others on the other side. And this was a huge revelation for me when I realized I had to take my eyes off myself Mm -hmm. And really realize, okay, God, what are you trying to teach me? So what kind of lessons did you, did you learn in the wilderness season? 
You know, honestly, Mamika, the very first lesson in losing a child, you go into this deep, dark, black hole. It literally feels like the earth opens and swallows you. Ragged, dark, black, horrible place. And as you're withered into yourself and crumpled in that fetal position, I felt that spiritual nudge that said, look up, find the light. Because if you can find a pinpoint of light, you can walk towards it. You can step out of the darkness. And following that light, that Jesus light, was so important. So the first thing I had to look, realize that as I was looking down, the Bible tells us there's somebody under our feet. And it's not somebody we want to have our everyday conversation with. It says the enemy of our soul is there. And I was listening to... You think you're a mother? You couldn't even raise your child to adulthood. What kind of mother is that? Blah. You know, it doesn't matter what the lie is. It's a lie. And I think it's incumbent upon us to shift our focus from the liar to that light, the truth, that light of Jesus. And the next one as we look up is renew your mind daily. Mm-hmm. And for me, I think I became a literal Bible junkie, gate, Bible junk, BibleGateway.com junkie. A word would drop in my spirit, and I'd go search all the scripture on love, hope, mercy, peace, grace, comfort, whatever that word was. And I would copy and paste that scripture onto a page. And if there were 20, I could read them all. If there were 1,000, I would kind of cherry pick out some. But as I read those, I'd pull out the sound bites and put a below. And then I might write a prayer that used them. But I would center justify those sound bites. And it was amazing. Some days they were nothing. Other days they were a cross or an anchor or some kind of visual picture that would show up. As I renewed my mind daily, God showed up in that word. And when we renew our mind, we change the thought process. We change the focus from the black to the light. Yeah. And we're able to see others who have lost and are living out loud in color again. And that's where we step in to the community with others yeah. who've gone before us and show us how to do it. And this is amazing. I mean, this is um, part of a lot of, I did a lot of research with my own book about uh, things like neuroplasticity. It's about yes. the, how the brain works. Yes. Now, when God, you know, what, what I find amazing is that science is finally catching up with the Bible. Well, duh. God said you need to renew your mind. And but when we take a step back, if we've grown up in church, and I know I've been a Christian since I was 10, mm-hmm. we hear that word, renew your mind. But sometimes you think, of, what is that? Is that like a spiritual shower? But basically what it means is if you've had a way of thinking, you don't have to continue thinking that way. You can, like you said, you sort of interrupt the way your thought process. So if you woke up in the morning and the first thing that you hear in your head is, oh, you're useless. What's the point of getting out of bed? You can go, no, God's word says I'm a child of God and I have, you know, all the, ble-. and you can start to declare things. And eventually it's like a muscle, right? You start to, and they show this in scientific, scientific evidence is you can actually change the way your brain, the functioning of your brain and eventually it doesn't become part of who you are. I mean, isn't that awesome news? It is. And you know, when you look at neuroplasticity, I think Dr. Caroline Leaf talked about it and shared the, when the chuck wagons went across the United States with the, the pioneers going across there, those ruts are still in the mud because it was such a heavy load. So those deep, deep, deep ruts are still in certain places where it was muddy. Our thoughts become our habits, become our routines, and they form ruts that our thoughts follow. They're automatically going to follow. But when we put in the Word of God, we start chipping down that edge on that rut, and that renewal, that renewal forms a new way of thinking. And isn't that wonderful news? (laughs) It's awesome. We can actually change our life and our situation. And it's not something you have to just go. And let's be honest, it's not going to happen overnight. It takes time. I mean, if you've created a bad habit of, of what Joyce Myers talks about, thinking, thinking, it's going to take you yeah. a while. Just like when you're exercising and you're training for a marathon, you can't just go out and all of a sudden, you know, you can win the race. You've got to actually train yourself. So kind of like baby steps, right? So you gave us some great tips how to get scripture, 
I love um, Bible Hub and Bible Gateway and all those apps Mm -hmm. sort of copying it. And would you say you keep them on your phone and maybe like you're just sitting and you're reading, you can read it out loud. Is that kind of your favorite um, tools? Actually, I started a blog that was just for me. I think the first year and a half, it was my healing journey is the way God had me immerse myself in the Bible, in, in the truth of what he had to say about who I am versus what the world has to say or others have to say. I had to look to my creator, my source, my strength, and turn and let him saturate me. So it was a blog, but I think wherever you hold it, it doesn't matter as long as it's somewhere you can go and let those words just seep into your soul. Well, that's great. I mean, it's definitely, it's a saturation, right? Saturating Mm -hmm. yourself and that's the constant renewal. Now you also mentioned something else, which is um, the new title of your book. Tell us about that. Oh, my newest book is Don't Go Through Life Naked. Oh, now that sounds a little risque, right? How do we walk around naked? Now, hmm, we're going to have to dive into this a little bit. If you ever felt like you feel like, you know, you wake up in the morning and you get late for work, the, the, the coffee machine breaks and you know, whatever things happen and you just feel like, why are these things happening to me today? Like, it feels like I'm under attack. Well, you probably might be. So <laughs> let's give us, our audience, a little bit of an insight about what you mean about don't go around the world naked. What does that mean? You know, the subtitle is how to clothe yourself in God's power. Uh, but the reality is there are moments, and I had this dream that was just one of those recurring dreams where I'd be soaring with the eagles and just up and down and beautiful and seeing the gorgeous earth. And then I'd take a nosedive. And at the 11th hour, I would turn and screech and land feet down. But I was crouched down, butt naked at work with this teeny tiny itty bit of little white washcloth. And that was <laughs> <a> all. <laughs> it was all she wrote was this itty bitty little <laughs> washcloth. And it wasn't quite big enough. And I started one what is this what is this and you know how you get those thoughts that I thought I was Christian and submitted God you know sub means under mit means mission under the same mission so even the enemy's taking a perfectly good word and messed it up for us (laughs) because I cringe every time I hear it until I saw it defined like that but I thought I was submitted as a Christian in all my ways but that itty bitty tiny little white washcloth, I was so exposed, so vulnerable. And it made me wonder if I had just submitted a little bitty, itty bitty part of my life to Jesus Christ as Lord versus all of me. And I wanted a bigger covering. <laughs> so, you know, the, the reality in that God took me to Revelation sixteen fifteen, and Jesus is talking and he says, I'm going to return like a thief. Always be prepared. Do not be caught naked and ashamed. Have your clothes ready. But do not be caught naked and ashamed. So that came straight out of the Bible, (laughs) (laughs) y'all. Exactly. (laughs) Don't go through life naked. But be prepared because we don't know Mm -hmm. when something's going to happen. And I tell a story about my son getting invited to a hockey tournament. We lived in, um, in Texas and we're headed up to Chicago. You know, my work, I traveled all the time, multiple million mile flyer. So everything's ready. I know how to get to the airport and and go. And we got to the airport. And as we're checking his luggage in, it's like, where's your hockey bag? Uh It's at the house. And I realized we had an opportunity for a do-over because we could go home and reschedule and go out on a later flight. This is many years ago when it was a lot easier to do. But we don't get a do-over when Jesus comes. And I don't know if we're in the end times. My mama just says we're 2,000 years closer. But he tells us to always be prepared. So have your spiritual clothes ready, that word of God, in your heart, in your head, in your life, where you're living it, so that we're not caught naked in shame because we don't get a do-over like my son did. So, I mean, what does it mean exactly to clothe yourself? Because we walk around, you know, we, we get up in the morning, we put our physical clothes on, and we know know we are set for the day but and this is something I I truly believe is important because I I even teach my kids my eight-year-old I have three kids and the youngest is eight and we make a little song in the morning you know thank you for the helmet observation praise pray to rise of the armor of God and this is what we're talking about is there's a spiritual side 
that if you're going to get dressed on the physical side, you wouldn't walk out of the door spiritually exposed. Like having the, the, the helmet of salvation helps you to, to protect your thoughts. Breast spread of light and righteousness. And I've seen this myself. When I forget to get dressed, my hurt, my feelings get hurt. I'm like, what is wrong with me today? And I'm like, oh, I didn't get dressed. So t- tell us a little bit about the practical aspects to that. How do you teach people to clothe themselves? That is so powerful. The, the reality is if I walk into the world or race into the world because I'm running late without putting my face in the word of God first, and it might just be one verse, I might have time to read. For he orders his angels to protect you everywhere you go. Thank you, Lord. These are your angels. You're protecting me today. And it doesn't matter. So whether you've got a 30-second get the word in and let it just be with you all day long, equipping you, or you've got five or ten minutes or longer. You know, there's some days that we have a little bit longer than we have other days. But the time that you spend just letting God speak and it might be that long just you take a breath and it's lord i need you and you put one scripture in those are the days that you probably need it the most because the enemy trying to distract you <laughs> from even getting that one little bit in but the hurrieder i got the behinder i got is what i felt like so just even one verse is yeah. so valuable so it's not about making it a ritual or like, oh, yes. and I mean, as women are, are, are fabulous at this, oh, beat myself on the, on the head because I didn't do something today and things I should have done and I did. It's not about putting yourself on a guilt trip. Mm-hmm. It's about just taking the moments. Like for me, like you said, take whatever moments you have. I might be in the carpool waiting for my daughter. Yes. Listening to praise and worship music really helps as well. Like if I'm in a, yes. not feeling really good or starting to get a little anxious, you know, just, just singing along with the songs is, you know, you're using your mouth and you're using your mind and you, you're focusing, you're kind of stopping to focus on whatever else is bothering you, you know, reading scriptures um, and also just, you know, changing your environment, I think helps a lot. And wouldn't you say ha- uh, like habits as well is a big part of it too? You know what? Absolutely. And habits are a routine that you've established. They're not good. They're not bad. They're just a routine that you've established. So if you have developed something that is not healthy for you, it's time to reevaluate it. If, if there is a way to change that, it's incumbent upon you to do the work necessary to get a new habit or routine that is healthy for you. And we know whether that's eating or running or putting God's word into our head and our heart or shifting the atmosphere with spiritual music. It just changes the way we think, the way we look, the way we act, and the way that we respond to others. Doesn't yeah, it? exactly. Well, one of my favorite things to do is journal. Like I, I've realized that this is how it helps me. I should call it my gratitude journal because sometimes, mm. you know, you can have those days like, oh my God, it's just happening and everything's falling apart. And you think, God, why are you never answering me? Kind of when you go back to your journal and you realize mm. uh, you even read like yesterday or six months ago, God was there and he actually did answer you. So it kind of keeps us accountable. Would you say, what is your favorite thing to do to kind of keep you focused on, on moving forward? You know what? I think journaling is very important and I'm not as disciplined in that, but I know that God will kind of nudge me about three or four o'clock in the morning. It's like, <laughs> I'd rather be sleeping, God. But if I take the time to get up and it might be five minutes and if I write then or have a conversation with him or a prayer time or whatever, it's very, very, very very rich, very rich. But if I sleep through it, I lose whatever it was that he wanted to share with me. I may have had a beautiful thought. It's like, oh, I remember he gave me this great concept to write about. Now, what was it? But kind I didn't like write it down. Big, big it, right? Yeah. And, yeah. Also the, the, and this is something that um, I would encourage people to do just slowly. It's not going to mean you have to write novels. It's literally just yeah. jotting down your thoughts because ideas are very ethereal they kind of come and they go unless you sort of pin them down and and do that but um i definitely i love those kind of tools about you know just practical advice what would be one takeaway tip you'd want people to remember you by and you would advise people make time for others because it's not all about us so i think if you've got a child that's saying mama 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 and you think it's a little thing If we take time for the little things when they're little, they'll tell us the big things when they're big. 
because to them, all of it's big things. And I think that's so incumbent upon us. <sighs> Can I remind you just to stop and breathe, right? That's so true. Listen. Like about my eight-year-old as well. It's like, she'll say, mom, mom. And I'm like, okay, I need to get this done. And sometimes I get so busy in just doing, okay, got to get the, the laundry and, the, you know, get the, the dinner ready. And sometimes there's a, a little moment we can miss. And I think, oh, why did I miss it? And now that they get older, I mean, my eldest is 19, they don't need me anymore. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, put the brakes on, right? Just taking a moment mm -hmm. and enjoying where we're at, I think is really vital. And um, yeah, I, I, you know, definitely re reading resources. Tell everybody about um, when is your book coming out and a little bit more about your, your ministry. Well, both of them are out. So Dance with Jesus, From Grief to Grace, and Don't Go Through Life Naked. This one won two 2016 Christian Literary Awards. The Don't Go Through Life Naked won the 2018 Gold Medal in Religion from the Jenkins Group, the Jerry Jenkins Group. Yeah, the oh, one that wow. wrote the Left Behind series. Well, congrats. That's awesome. <laughs> and they're little because... You know what? I realize that we don't have a lot of time. So they might be a 30 minute or an hour read, depending upon where you read and how fast you read. Yes, they're both ebooks that you can get them on Amazon or wherever books are sold. Uh, but I think if we are grieving or know someone who's grieving, if you've got a friend, Lisa Turker said, I will give this book to every one of my friends who's crying and doesn't know what to do. You know what? When you had the Proverbs 31 president endorse a book for grief, mm -hmm. she lost her brother when she was a little girl. She understands it. She gets it. Yeah. Dr. Thelma Wells with the Women of Faith wrote the introduction to, to this one and said, seriously, Susan, you're making fun or laughing lightly at the word of God? No. He gave me a sense of humor so he can get to the deep truths of what we need to do yeah. to, as you said, Put on that helmet of salvation <laughs> and the full armor of God and be equipped for the day. And I think that's so incumbent upon us to realize that there are resources available. And if my voice is for you, I'd be honored for you to read yeah, those books. Well, tell everybody what's the best place they can reach out and find you. SusanBMead.com. So S-U-S-A-N-B, like boy, M-E-A-D.com. I write on every Friday. So you can find resources there. Yeah. And if you want to follow me on social media, author Susan B. Mead on Facebook. And then on pretty much the rest of social media, it's at Susan B. Mead. So definitely. Well, you've got some great resources. I'll definitely encourage everyone to go and visit and tell Susan you saw, you heard her and saw her on the, the worthy podcast. We would love to get our feedback um, and we love feedback. So share your comments below. Let us know what any aha moments from today's video, any insights or what are you taking away from today's episode that you're going to implement um, and make sure to reach out to Susan and let her know that you heard and saw her on the podcast. We love to be able to connect with you. If you want more free resources that we only share with our newsletter community, go to bimikukuni.com and sign up today. We have great resources like ebooks, inspirational screensavers, printables, and exclusive access to our community. Well, I've got to say thanks so much, Susan, for joining us. It's been a total honor speaking to you, and I'm definitely going to be picking up those books. I'm going to be reading through that. I just love the concept. Um, so I'm going to say thanks again for taking the time. You know what? Thank you so much. And I, too, have a free resource for your listeners. If awesome. they would pull up their cell phone and go into their text messaging and text 444999, that's the address, so 444999, one word, Dance with Jesus, no spaces, and capitalize Dance with Jesus, Dance with Jesus, to 444999. You send it through, they'll say, cool, you want Susan's six-day faith-building resource? Yeah, add your email. And those six days of free spiritual faith building emails will come your way. And I won't bug you after that. Except maybe once a month with the ministry message. But you could unsubscribe at any time. But that's free. That's awesome. Well, that's definitely a great resource. So make sure to go and do that. We'll have all the, the links that we mentioned today in the show notes. So if you are driving and listening, you can definitely click on the show notes. As well as if you're watching this on a computer or on a, on a screen. Make sure to go and click those buttons so you can then get those resources we've mentioned today. I've got to say, well, thanks again for joining us, everyone. Until next time, take care. 
come and follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I share lots of inspiring content.